Welcome to the Dwarven Forge Build of the Month for December of 2019, and this is the Sepulchre of the Serpent Priest. I built this with three of our sets. It's one of our Classic Dungeon Remastered Core sets, and two of our Forsaken Temple sets, the Pit and the Antechamber. It's a great example of how you can use some of our flashy Forsaken Temple pieces to spice up some of your regular dungeon pieces. They all work wonderfully well together in their modular manner. Uh, this is an ancient tomb where a priest from some forgotten snake god or cult from a couple hundred years ago, uh, his body is enshrined. Uh, the players, for some reason, have to go talk to his spirit, so they have to try and penetrate the defenses of this ancient temple or this ancient tomb, as it were, uh, and get to him. And of course, we have lots of scaly doom waiting for them within. Let's go take a look. <laughs> so this is our whole build laid out. Uh, but I want to show it to you like the players would see it on your table. So I'm going to fly out these rooms that we built on terrain trays until the players discover them. If you want to do a dramatic reveal like I like to do, you can place terrain trays over this or some graph paper or some cloth or an old t-shirt or whatever. You can use this little, uh, we put a little floor tile out here to set the mood. You could do a marching order out there if you want, although it's only four squares, so you can remove it all together. But yeah, so get the player minis out there once they kick open the door or gently push it open or whatever, tiptoe in, you reveal the room to them. This uh, room, we did a nice mix of dungeon pieces and Forsaken Temple pieces to show compatibility. Uh, in the corners of these plain rooms here, I put the little quarter pillars in the plain dungeon walls to kind of give them some snaky flair and flavor. The main features of the room uh, they will notice there's six snake walls around the perimeter. There's some snake floors in among the regular floors. There's a pair of doors, nothing like a couple of choices. Uh, there's the six snake walls, and there's this big uh, elaborate snake wall dead ahead. The gag in this room is once everybody enters, we'll have the door like slam closed and magically lock or you know whatever, something to that measure. And then you have the terrible hissing sound coming from all these snakes. And they realize quickly that it's poison gas. What a fun trope, right? The room is filling with poison gas, so the clock is ticking. And of course, it lets you know your warforged can laugh at it because they're immune, and the dwarves are like hardy against it, or whatever. So it gives a, lets the players use some of their skills. But poison gas is filling, so there's a clock ticking. So you can set some sort of you know some sort of fun timer. Maybe it's a real life timer, like you give them ten minutes in real time, or maybe it's a set number of turns, whatever. However, you want to create some tension in the room. This is the resting place of uh, this ancient serpent priest, right? The sepulchre of the serpent priest. So he's here, and what they don't know, and maybe put a little inscription on here, he's, his body, his blood, and his spirit have been separated, and they're laying here uh, for some adventurous to discover. Maybe they're trying to, um, to get him before some evil entity does, or who knows what. Maybe they have to ask him some questions, but they need all three pieces together. Or not. So they've got to find all sort of three pieces of the priest, the blood, the body, and... Uh, his spirit. What they're supposed to do is get these floors to line up on these floors, right? So see how we, the snake is facing this way, he wants to go there, the snake wants to go here. That's the snake's homes and then it'll open these doors. So the gag is with these serpent walls. So each of these heads is like a joystick, a d-pad. You can control them to move the floors around. The trick is only one of them is the actual joystick, the other two are traps. And maybe they can do some arcana or investigation or something to figure out which is which. Maybe religion. Maybe because it's an ancient cult thing, it could be uh, use religion check, use that for something. To make it really lively, we've got six walls with three heads, so there's 18 heads. Only eight of them move things, right? One will move this one north, one will move it south, one will move east, one will move it west. One move this way, so there's eight, and the other 10 are trapped. You could have a couple of different things for the ones that are trapped, right? So maybe the uh, serpent blasts uh, poison at them, or it blasts their, its eyes to like a ray beam or something, some plain damage is fun. And then you can get some lively stuff, like maybe there's a, um, a uh, fear or frightened effect. Uh, maybe there's a cool charm effect oh. that it does. They're ensorcelled by the uh, snakes, and they either like send their transfixed, or they want to attack their friend, or maybe they want to strip off all their armor and run around and join the snake cult, something lively, right? Because it, it, taking a donning and doffing armor, that's a big time commitment, especially when the room's filling up with uh, filling up with poison gas. And then the third thing, you could do something cool like a, uh, a body swap thing where you have the players switch character sheets, but they're still the same personality, so now the, you know, the 
haughty elf is stuck in the grubby dwarf's body and the grubby dwarf is stuck in the haughty elf's body. And then, just to make it really lively, you can do the thing like they did in uh, Westworld Season 2 when the hosts start seeing the weird copies of themselves. They freak out in different ways. So you can have a little table. So maybe if, they, if you see yourself, you're outside your own body looking at yourself and you can either... You either uh, want to just attack and destroy, there's like an uncanny valley thing, or maybe you're just totally hypnotized or transfixed, or maybe you're like seduced by yourself, or maybe you disbelieve it and it's an illusion, or maybe, you know, so there's all sorts of weird shenanigans going with this body swap. So anyway, you do some sort of fun puzzle thing in here with manipulating the walls and then moving these things five feet at a time until they figure out where they need to go. And it's kind of a fun thing you can do with terrain, right? That's one of the reasons we did it is it's fun to move these bits around and get them to line into place. Boom. So, once they get the floors into place, the doors click unlock. So, they can open, let's say one door at a time, because, I don't know, it's too fun. It's too, if they can do them both at the same time, what's the point? So, let's go into this door first. So, let's say they open up this door, um, and we'll fly in this room on the terrain tray as they discover it. Flying in the rooms as they reveal them, flying them in, lets you uh, help them avoid metagaming. They don't know exactly maybe how big or where they're going or what lies there. And plus, it's just, a, once again, a fun reveal. Um, and building them in train trays, then if you need to go between sessions, you just pop it off and put it on your shelf till next week. Anyway, so once again, it's a nice mix of dungeon pieces and our Forsaken Temple pieces. The Serpent Brazier is just, it's on its floor, LED floor socket. We have that standing, sitting right on top of the floor. In the corners here, I have these little Medusa snake pillars that I filled this little corner gap with to make it feel much more seamless. These are just our Forsaken Temple LED. Can you see that LED? Cool flickering fire. The big main feature, of course, is the sacrificial pit. So what I've done here is I've taken the doors off, right? You can pop these in. I've taken these fun spring-loaded doors off because maybe you don't want to use that gag, or I just wanted to change it up and show some other ways you could do this thing. So originally I was going to do this fun gag where if you press this little button here to release the little latch, you can put a floor in here. I was going to originally put the brazier in the pit, but I thought it'd be cool to use it as a pit. But that's a fun trick you can do, put various floors in there. All right, but for this sake, we put it over, built a nice hole in the floor, and the bottom here, so this is kind of cheating. I use the, um, this is a texture patch from our Caverns Deep set. This is the necrotic uh, sludge. Put that in there. You could just print anything you want and put it in there whole very easily. Um, or you could use one of our texture patches uh, where you can just use a piece of fabric or something cool. But this is supposed to be ancient blood. That's why it's kind of that weird black swirly thing. You could just you could print something out. You could draw something. A lot of options. So. I just left a two by two hole, put this pit over it, and boom, we got a, a big gaping pit into all sorts of craziness. The gag in this room is they have to uh, extinguish this flame. This room holds the blood of the sacred priest. It is now this sort of terrible black swirling mass uh, down there. It definitely doesn't look friendly. Um, maybe even if you want to make it creepy, it's like moving a little bit, like there's a little uh, life to it. Or maybe you want to give a surprise, it's just like totally still and just gross and creepy. Maybe they just blow the thing out? Maybe they, um, maybe it's a thing where they have to, uh, maybe they have to extinguish these two flames. You could pour some cantrips in there, uh, like Ray of Frost could put it out, or... Maybe you could use Arcana. Ooh, no, let's use religion again. I'm just, I'm gonna keep, keep doubling down on religion. You can do some holy rites and uh, put out the flames. So you put those two flames out, it'll cause this flame to go out, but that will also cause the, um, the blood. It's been, for a hundred years, it's been sitting there, it's been festering in darkness and it's uh, sentient. And it'll come out, it could be like a uh, black pudding, or something, and if you have the, uh, from Caverns Deep, if you have the villain's pack from the Underdoom, you could drop this crazy necrotic tendril in there. That could be your, uh, your crazy black pudding, right? And, they go, ah, ah, ah. and that thing kind of attacks them. Of course, it's kind of blocking the door. Um, you know, maybe it even comes out and it's chasing them around, or maybe it just has a little bit of reach and it's doing something. But yeah, you make them fight like weird blood god ooze creature. Um, could be, uh, could be lively, right? So then they. Uh, 
I mentioned the thing, there's this click, so they come out here and let's have this, uh, maybe instead of a click, maybe when the thing goes out, it's a, uh, it's more of a boom, like a magical, uh, sort of a magical moment, right? So when they come out here, let's say um, this, what about this one? This flame is now illuminated on this wall. You go over to this door, which is now unlocked because, whoop, let's put these floors where they belong. Uh, so when I open this door, you can fly in to the second room. So for this center build here, I took the Serpent Brazier piece on the same LED socket floor and put that on top of four of our Serpent Pillar floors. So it's got the pillar baked in. I was trying to do a nice vertical thing because it looks cool on the table and it's you can't really replicate it on, uh, on a dry erase mat or graph paper. So. Trying to put 3D in 3D terrain. And then on the center of these, so these are just sitting laying on the floor. And then in the center, uh, we have the altar from, uh, what is it? It's from the pit set from the Forsaken Temple. Um, and the rest are just plain dungeon pieces, just a door in the corner. They don't know what's behind it. The gag in here is this is the resting place of the body of the serpent priest, right? So the blood was. The other room, the body's in here, they have yet to find the soul. Same thing, they've got to extinguish the, the flame. How do they do that? I, I don't know. What, you know what, how about you tell me in the comments, how do you think they have to extinguish uh, this flame? Uh, and my thought was to complicate things, uh, we'll take a piece from the playbook from our Dungeon of Doom module, which you can download on our site. Maybe we'll keep a, uh, we'll have a link in our description there. And these uh, various serpent heads will can shoot out different effects uh, at the players as they're zipping around here on different initiative counts. So you could have one on 20, one on 10, and one on one or something. And they're doing stuff to uh, mess with the players as they're trying to figure out how to extinguish the flames. Um, and when they do, maybe there's some treasure in here, right? Maybe there should be some treasure in here. And most importantly, they hear the whoom, and this other flame will light up in the other room. Uh, also, if they want to go in here, we we'll just have this, you can pop it in when they find it. So it stops the metagame and you just pop this corner and it's a little storage closet. Maybe there's some treasure in there. Maybe there's something in there that they have to do to uh, extinguish the flame. I don't know, but I wanted to have a little, little room that could have something to explore in there. So once they get this flame out, let's use the, uh, the old switch. That flame goes out, this illuminates, and they come back out here. They, do some, they touch this wall, they do something with maybe inscription on there and tells them what to do. This will rise up and you will reveal the last bit of this encounter. So I'm just taking two floors, slide those on top of each other, take the old snake floor because that's a fun one, put that in there, and then three floors in here, one, two, three, and then our other freestanding temple wall. We're using the circular side. We put that up there. All right, so this is, this contains, it's like the phylactery for the soul of the serpent priest. So they've got, they've freed the body, the blood, and now they're on to the soul. This is gonna be just like a simple, just kind of doing like a pit trap gag. Maybe if you want to make things lively, the edge is greased. Um, and the walls could be greased too or something. Um, how these snakes are here after 100 years? I don't know, it's probably magic or something. Um, maybe they're phantasmal snakes. Um, maybe they're phantasmal flying snakes if you wanna get things really lively. Um, and then, and maybe we left a little inscription to give them a clue because riddles are fun. And the idea would be if they you follow the snake's head again, we're using the snake head gag a bunch. Yeah, there's a little brick there and you can hit that brick and there's a little like handholds gonna kind of pop out they could use to get over here. Otherwise, you try and jump, you hit the grease, you fall in the snake pit, they attack you, whatever. And they get up here, and they could do some sort of little chicanery with this and release the soul of the, uh, the priest, and then they get their cool role play, they find out the secret prophecy they needed, and then they can get the heck out of there. And maybe the whole place like starts to collapse after the, the spirit has been woken, because that's always fun, right? They gotta run out before it collapses. Maybe on their way out, the, red things on the floor, do something terrible, I don't know. Maybe they have to get back across this thing, get out and flee this place forever, for all eternity. And that's the end of your gaming session. They go give you high fives, because you made a cool bit. <laughs> and that was the sepulcher of the Serpent Priest, a 
I hope you enjoyed this build. Thanks for watching. And remember, this is the sort of thing you could scale up to any level as long as it has some bite. So we're gonna slither back with some more content like this next month. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our quality videos. And now, it's back to the anvil.